First of all, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us um, on your evening. Um, this is what we're calling our Fox Town Hall, our reopening town hall. And uh, there's just a few things I'll run through uh, sort of the norms of, of this process. You know, it is a webinar, which means you get to hear me a lot um, pretty much all night. Um, so I'm sorry for that, but I'll try to make it as uh, informative and painless as possible for all of you that are stuck, you know, doing Zooms all day. Uh, I know it's tough to do one more at night. So we'll try to make this efficient uh, and helpful. That's the goal. Um, I have Rui Bao with us tonight. Rui is our uh, chief business official, chief business officer. And um, her role mostly tonight is to kind of help me out sharing the screen and um, also sort of looking through the chat room. Um, so my multitasking skills aren't tested too much. She can kind of collect the questions that that come up. Um, and we can go from there. Now, there's a couple of slide decks we will get into, um, but just a few things before we do that. Um, let's see, uh, Jerome Simon is, is helping us. He's our chief technology officer, and Jerome is usually quiet, but once in a while, I might ask him a question. and He might join us too. So those are the, the names or the people that you see on the screen. Um, I think we have Sam Leinbach with us tonight, uh, one of our board of trustees. So Sam, if you're out there, thanks for joining us. Sam is um, kind of our unofficial representative. Sam comes to a lot of the Fox uh, events and checks in. So he usually is our kind of uh, contact um, with the board. Um, let's see, a couple of things to bring up before we even move forward. Uh, you all probably have a question, at least I got a lot of these yesterday as our current tier changed. And when I say tier, um, our San Mateo County, uh, you know, statewide tiers, and now we're in the red. And I, I got quite a few emails saying, we're in the red, are we opening? Um, so I thought I would just address that before I get into anything else. Um, so in the red, you can reopen school. Um, I, I won't give you all the details for it, but it, it is possible. However, um, our board has uh, chosen at this point, our plan is to open uh, under uh, the orange or yellow tier. So I'm still planning on opening school on January 19th. That's what we're talking about here in the details. Um, I'm assuming if January 19th was today, we wouldn't be able to do that because we'd be in the red. So everything's still quite up in the air. And I know everyone gets a little tired of hearing that, but that's, that's the truth. Um, I will give you um, the truth tonight. Um, uh, they'll, well, I will stop kind of a couple of times tonight in between slides uh, for questions. So you don't have to save them all up to the end. Uh, we'll try to kind of answer them as, as we go. Uh, so you don't have to wait to the, to the very, very end to do that. Um, last week I met with staff and I rolled out this plan. And the plan has changed since then. Uh, that's how, how fluid things have been. One of the big changes um, that, that we're making was uh, when we discussed the hybrid model, uh, it's for the last several months, we've talked about um, an A, B plan. And what we mean by that is um, a group of students, the A group would come to school on um, Monday and Thursday. And then our group B students would come on uh, Tuesday and Friday. And then every other Wednesday, the A and B groups would, would uh, flip-flop. So essentially you'd come to school five days out of 10. Out of a 10 day period, you'd come to school five days. And that's how uh, I was planning and working on the logistics up until just a couple of days ago. Um, one of the, the models we talked about early on was an AM PM model, um, which would mean all students, you know, a, a, a chunk would come in the morning and then there'd be a break and then the other chunk would come in the afternoon so that all students would come to school every day. It would be shortened day, uh, which we all liked, quite frankly, as um, speaking on behalf of the principals, we liked that, that kids were at school every day. But logistically, we could not um, figure out how to manage the safety protocols um, and the kind of changeover or the, the transition, how to get the rooms ready for a new cohort. Um, so we didn't really think that was possible at that time. Since then, um, we've revisited it and we are working towards that model. And I'll discuss that a little more detail in the, in the plan itself, 
But that was a big shift just from last uh, Wednesday, I believe, is when I met with, with my staff. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, the lynch pin that holds it all together is for us to try to bring the kids back every day. And we have some uh, new custodial tools in our, uh, in our tool belt that we have been testing and trying out uh, so that we can ensure that we can get the rooms ready for the next group. So, you know, before all the slides, um, I wanted to let you guys know that. Uh, let's see, I'm just checking my notes here before we get into the slide deck. There'll be two slide decks tonight. Um, one is a little more general, uh, and then one is a little more specific towards Fox, and then there's some redundancy, and I apologize for that. So some of the slides I won't spend a lot of time on. There are things that you can look at on your own, um, but I thought I would uh, give us maybe a little more opportunity for questions. So before we get into the slide deck, um, I'm going to just ask you, Rui, is there anything popping up that might be appropriate to what I'm talking about now, or should I just keep rolling? Does it look like everyone's just being a good listener right now? Yeah, let's go ahead and roll into it. And yeah, everyone can feel free to just chat questions into the box and we'll uh, we'll do, we'll go from there. Okay, great. And let's see, anyone who joined late, uh, thank you for uh, joining. Um, it's nice, well, not to see you, but you know, to, to have us all together. I appreciate you guys coming out tonight. Okay, so, um, Let's jump into this. So this is a, more of a, a general um, slide deck that I slipped some things in that were uh, specific to, to Fox. So, um, all right, reopening requirements. I talked a little bit about that in this slide. Rui, just a quick question. Is this uh, available like tomorrow on websites or you know for people to click and link? I know our, the, the draft reopening plan is already there, but will this slide deck be something uh, that can be accessed? Yeah, we can put it online. I would also recommend probably sending it out. Um, okay. And by the end of the week, we'll also have an FAQ posted from all the town halls. Okay, great. So if you miss something here, don't don't panic, and um, it, it will be available to you guys. Um, but the uh, this particular slide, we can click on the 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 whole BRSSD draft reopening plan, which is a, a pretty lengthy document. So we're not going to do that tonight. Um, that's already on the website. If for those of you that you want to want to dig into that particular slide, okay. Um, so quarantine recommendations. Uh, I thought we'd just you know hit you guys with this first. Um, we're coming up on the holiday season, and um, that you know traditionally means uh, travel or seeing uh, people you don't see on a regular basis. Um, so we want us to all be very careful with that. Uh, you know, that uh, what we all do will help us to keep our school or to get our school open. So we will follow these um, protocols. Uh, and again, if you do plan on travel, we're not back to school yet. So um, it's not that critical here at Fox, but in general, um, you know, be careful, be safe. I, I want all of you guys to be able to join us uh, here at school when we can do that. And of course, I want you to be able to, you know, the kids to uh, be able to continue to participate. So keep that in mind. Um, there's a link there too that you'll be able to uh, get into more details. Uh, let's let's keep going though, Rui, with some of this stuff. All right, uh, data. I you know this was from a few days ago. It may not even be accurate at this point, but we all do know we are uh, in the red, uh, which is not the lowest. But as, if you look at our state in general, most counties are in the uh, you know the purple tier, which is the the, low, the one you don't want to be in. Um, so are we going to be in that? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but we're definitely in the red and that's, that's where we're at, like I mentioned at the front. So that, that's driving some of our decisions right now. Okay, so let's take a look at how we plan to bring students back. Um, they call it a phased approach and some of the other school districts have been doing this. So we're lucky in, in one respect that we have some models to um, check out and actually get feedback from um, different principals who are you know, really there doing it and getting a lot of good information on how to do things safely, what kind of stumbling blocks they've run into. But this phased approach uh, gives us an opportunity to not bring everybody back all at once. Um, so theoretically, uh, if you look at the screen there, you can see that for us, our TK, K and first grades would start uh, on the 19th. In a modified schedule, I'm sorry, I can't tell you exactly what that would be um, yet. 
but originally we envisioned that being sort of a, a, a partial day. Um, I don't know what that will look like yet with the AMPM model. With the AB model, um, with the AB model, uh, we were going to be here all day, so we were thinking of truncating the day a little bit. So I'm not sure yet how that will how that will uh, work. And then by the 25th, uh, that group of students would be coming on a regular schedule, whatever that would mean, uh, a full day. Um, and then you can see second, third grade, uh, we transition them back uh, on the first, fourth and fifth on the 22nd. So really by March 1st, theoretically, we have all of our students coming back on campus. Now remember, not all 500 at the same time, cut that in half and, uh, and I'm making an assumption that all the kids wanna come back and you wanna send your kids back, right? We'll talk a little bit about that too, but under the assumption that we're all back. Um, some of the other numbers that you see beyond that uh, are more uh, Ralston or middle school related. And I, I saw SDC, uh, those are what we, those are our special day classes. We do not have a special day class uh, at Fox. So that doesn't apply to us. Okay. Uh, thanks, Rui. Let's do the next one. All right. So the four pillars, this is really important. Um, you know, the more I research this and, and, you know, the more anxiety and nervousness I have about this, really, if we're uh, washing our hands appropriately, often teaching the kids how to do that, uh, we have our face coverings on, including the students. Uh, we have our classrooms uh, laid out appropriately. Um, and then we keep our gatherings, our, our classes uh, separated as much as possible. It really does uh, help to keep us safe. So these four pillars are critical. And this isn't just Fox, this is, this is uh, staff wise. But as part of our Fox plan, that's definitely what, what we will be following, okay? Rui, the next one. All right, physical distancing. All right, we'll talk a little bit about this more specifically, but uh, for our students coming back, you'll, if you've been here um, in the last couple of months, uh, you'll notice that we have um, new, new fencing uh, up, which has nothing to do with COVID. It was planned prior to that, uh, but it does lend itself to helping um, us be more strategic about uh, how students enter and exit the campus. It gives us a little more control. So it's a, sort of a, a positive byproduct of, of installing the fences. Um, if you haven't been here, uh, check it out. Um, it's not a security fence per se. There, there is access to the school, but it's definitely a deterrent. Um, and I think overall, when this is all done, it'll be a nice addition um, when we get back to school regularly. Um, daily checks um, for our students and staff. Um, I'm here every day right now, and I go through a screening protocol and also check my temperature. And so do the other staff members that are here. So that would be something we're expecting uh, our students to do. Um, having specific desks, cubbies, hooks, materials that are just for that one student, we're working on that. Uh, bathrooms will be specific to certain groups. Um, outdoor seating for lunch or recess, if we have that, uh, depending on the model that we use, the scheduling. Um, I've already moved, uh, believe it or not, if, if you're familiar with the red tables, I've I've moved them and uh, you can sit two students on each table uh, appropriately spaced. So we can have 48 students sit on 24 tables, um, which is not what we're used to, but it, it does uh, lend itself to an entire grade level uh, to be able to have them sitting at one time. So whether that will take place or not, we don't know, but we are prepared for that. Um, the staggered schedules is important. Um, uh, we'll look at the proposed kind of sample schedule, and you'll see that uh, getting to school will be staggered for different uh, grade levels. Uh, we have 10 minutes in between, and then that would be the same in reverse on the dismissal, so that we don't have too much of a congregation at one time. Um, so that's, uh, that's the physical distancing piece. All right, next one, Rui. All right, uh, so again, we, we talked a little bit about this. Uh, this is just a visual of it, but you know, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, we have our A group uh, in the morning and the B group 
is getting their distance specials. What does this mean, distance specials? Um, this could be your PE, your music, your science, um, your art possibly. Uh, so they're, depending on your grade level, there's different specials, uh, but that's what that would mean. And then um, the Beeb group would come in in person and get their uh, in-class instruction. So that's how that would work Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Wednesday is our, you know, traditionally our, our shortened day. Um, and we don't know exactly how that will look yet. Uh, you can see that's to be determined. So we'll, we'll figure that as we go, okay? All right, so this is again a, a sample um, of what we could do. Um, it, you know, it's not in stone at all, um, but it is doable. And you'll notice, you know, primarily what you'll see is uh, it looks like about a 90 minute slot uh, where students, uh, excuse me, not 90, uh, a two and a half hour slot uh, in the morning and then the same in the afternoon. So that would be your in school instruction time. And then there's this uh, 90 minute break. Now, lunch doesn't mean kids stay for lunch. Kids would have to leave. We want to get the kids out so we can get the next, the rooms cleaned and get the next group in. So uh, under this AM PM model, we wouldn't have lunch at school um, like what we're used to. So Rui, what, let, let me just check in with you and see. I know I can kind of see lots of stuff going. I don't know if you're able to answer them, if, if there's something I can answer while we're here. Yeah, for sure. So um, a couple of things. Uh, one, I've seen a couple of questions over um, sort of uh, whether this will be binding for the rest of the school year. Um, and the answer is yes. Um, however, the choices that you will receive in the family survey will be I prefer hybrid, even if this means a shift in teacher. I prefer distance, even if this means a shift in teacher. Um, and I prefer to stay with my teacher um, and go with whether they select hybrid or distance. So there will continue to be full distance learning as it exists now. Um, Mike, there was a question around whether the back gate will be open for students who walk. Ah, good question. Um, whoever brought that up, thank you. So uh, traditionally, um, we have our we have our back gateway in the corner, which is just open. Um, when I first arrived here five years ago, believe it or not, everybody, uh, it concerned me, and I sort of reached out to the community about that, about closing it, and it wasn't a very popular idea uh, because of the access that that families use. Because of COVID, um, I think it's very important that we do close that so that we can have um, access only from the front of the school and it can be controlled. Um, I think that of course we can install something that's safe to exit through um, in case we need to get out. I'm not saying you put a, a padlock and a chain on it, but envision um, a gate with a panic bar so that no one could enter, uh, but we can exit from there. Will this be inconvenient for some of you? The answer is yes. Um, part of the part of what we like about that is that it, it, it relieves some of the traffic and challenges in the morning. With this, you've got to imagine we're only coming, a smaller group of people will be coming at any one time. So it should relieve some of the pressure at the front of the school. Um, but I feel pretty strongly that uh, if we're able to get reopened, we'll need to keep that closed um, during the school day. And it also helps to keep out um, visitors that shouldn't be there, uh, quite frankly. So uh, are we all the way there yet? No, but we're, we're definitely discussing how to do that. So um, thanks for asking. I'm not sure who that was, but thanks for asking. There's also some questions around fifth grade um, in particular being a little different um, and what that will look like in hybrid. Ah, uh, you mean like the team teaching and the modeling? I'm, I'm guessing that might be what the question is. It's a great question. Um, I can't answer it specifically. I know that the team wants to continue to do that for sure, um, if at all possible. And I know they're strategizing on how to do it, uh, but I can't tell you, sorry, fifth grade parents, I can't tell you um, how that would work, but I know that that's what they want to do and I'm going to support that. So I think we can get it done. It may look a little bit different. Um, again, we have to see 
uh, our numbers, meaning, you know, what you as parents choose to do, like Rui was just talking about, you know, how many people are going to be comfortable to come back and how many are, are you know, going to decide to, to stay. And that may impact things too, um, as far as our enrollment and our staffing and how we have to move things around. But my, one of my assumptions is that you're all coming back and you all want to be here and all my teachers are going to be here. So that's been my mindset as I've been making the plan. So I, I think that uh, the fifth grade team will, will work hard to, to be able to keep working in collaboration like they do now. Okay. Any others, Rue, before we check a couple more slides? Um, let's move forward and I'll, I'll keep answering some uh, via chat. Okay. And then folks, um, if, you know, if you don't get anything, an something answered tonight, um, you know, just email me, um, you know, call whatever I'll, I'll be here. So don't feel like if we don't get an answer tonight that, that uh, that's the end of it. Um, cause things are liable to change anyways. And, uh, you know, the answers may be different in a week than they are tonight. Okay. So keep that in mind. All right. So, uh, Okay, so here is a, a map that I made. Um, if you're familiar with the school, it's, it's kind of a crude map. It's not one of my greatest skills, but I was able to put this together. Um, and what I did is I took, um, took each grade level and where they're currently at and uh, gave them a color. And then the new gates that we have, I, I gave them a, a number. And the arrows kind of dictate which way you would enter and exit uh, the school to help keep um, you know too much traffic going in any one direction. So this is my idea that will help us get the kids in and out without intermixing too much with with others. Uh, is it perfect? No, it's not at all. But is it better than all of us flowing past the office, which is what we typically do? I would say yes, much better than that. Um, and again, with the staggered times. Um, you know, you can envision only three, you know, maybe three classes coming at any one time, um, maybe even four or five or six, but they're coming in in different directions. So the idea is to, to keep us separated as much as possible, keeping that physical distance. Um, the bathrooms, I just highlighted a couple of them there. Uh, but those bathrooms will be designated to certain classes. I don't have that written in, you know, in the, on the map, but we'll, we'll share that. Um, there are bathrooms within the middle room area, which um, still would be utilized by our, our K and our ones um, primarily. So that gives you just an idea of what I'm thinking and um, sharing with staff as we kind of work together to, to figure out what, what makes the most sense. Uh, but you can see there are gates and, um, you know, something that's different too with this model um, is that you parents who are used to walking your students in or picking them up, the, up at the door won't be able to do that anymore. Um, that's, a, you know, one more negative piece. You know, we're used to having a very open campus here where uh, parents often congregate, you know, maybe at the lunch benches waiting for their students to get out uh, or walking them right up to the door. And in this, uh, you know, COVID world, um, visitors are basically not allowed, more or less. I mean, I, I don't like to be that way because that's not how I do business here. But um, so we're going to have to really work with our students on, especially our little ones, uh, you know, practicing on which way they walk. And we'll have staff um, that can help get our kids uh, back and forth. Our bigger kids, not too, too worried about that have been to our campus and not a problem. But but uh, it is a challenge, I, primarily for our kinder students. As you can see the path, it looks small on a map, but for a little five-year-old, that might be a kind of a scary long walk if they don't know uh, how they, you know, if they haven't done it before. So uh, I'll send out more information about that, but this is the general idea on how to get students uh, on and off campus uh, without getting too, too crowded, okay? All right, Rui, a uh, couple of pictures of classrooms here. These are our classrooms. Um, and you may have seen this earlier. I did this at the very beginning of the year at, in anticipation that we were gonna open. Uh, so the classroom on the left is Miss Raisner's classroom. That's a first grade classroom. And you can see uh, that they use a, what we call a double desk. So children normally sit next to each other. Um, we can fit 12 students. Uh, 
six feet apart um, as this room is laid out. It's not the greatest picture, uh, but, but it fits. The room on the right is Miss Reyes's room and they're single desks and there's 15 of them in there. And they too are six feet uh, in diameter. Meaning, you know, if, you, if, I, if a student was in their chair, you could make a circle six feet away and they wouldn't hit anyone else uh, in their chair. Again, is it perfect? No. Does it meet the requirements? Yes. Uh, so our rooms would look like this. Um, and these again are making an assumption that it will be a full class of either 12 or 13 in the primary uh, or up to 15 in our intermediate. So this is just an example that it can be done and we are strategizing that too. I've reached out to my teachers and we're talking about, you know, whether I do it, whether we do it together, you know, the different ways that we can work it. Some teachers have already, uh, you know, got on it right away early on and their rooms are kind of ready to go. Uh, but that's what a classroom will typically look like uh, for your students that come back, okay? All right, so I guess you can click on the link to my op reopening. Again, there'll be some redundancy in there, uh, Rui. Yeah. And I may, I may have covered it. So as I get to it, we may just roll on through it. Now this is, again, I have draft all over this thing and there's a reason. It, it, it is truly a draft. So um, if you can maybe zoom it up a little bit, I'm not sure. Um, what everybody else is seeing, but yeah, that's better. That, that helps me out. Um, so let's see, we talked about the map already. Like I said, there'll be some redundancy here. You can scroll through that. Um, so drop off times, yeah, let's stop there. These are sort of the proposed times. Um, and you can see there's a, a 10 minute um, gap in between and that we didn't just make up. Um, we did talk to some other schools uh, that are already doing this type of thing. And it seemed like 10 minutes was sufficient based on the amount of kids we were projecting to come and go. Um, so, you know, if it was a half hour, that would be perfect. But then we would run out of time in the day uh, to get everybody in and out. So I put two times there. So for example, um, the fourth and fifth grade model, I put 815. That would be the uh, AM group. And then you could see at 1215, the PM group would come in, if that makes sense to everybody. So again, this is a draft, um, but it is a model that theoretically uh, would work. Um, so let's stop there. So vehicle drop-off. This is, this is the plan, of course, is a plan. And one of the schools we looked at um, takes the temperatures of students while they're getting dropped off uh, in the vehicle, which I think has some, some good positives, um, but also can be challenging. Uh, either way, we at this point with the guidelines that we have, we need to do that before they enter the classroom. So we haven't really fully decided how that will look, but we do know we need to do that before they, before they enter. And I think you know, the easiest would be you know, in the car, sure, that would be great, but uh, we're not entirely sure that will work. Um, we're, we're looking at that as an option. Um, walking to school, right? We, we love that and we, we hope lots of students can do that. Um, we would have a location outside. I put the flagpole as a general location since that's kind of the, the drop off point, um, but we would have to strategize how we go ahead and bring our kids in uh, through that through that area. And then biking to school, I did add that. We don't have a lot of bikers. Um, it's possible uh, we may need to, you know, set up something to lock the bikes up outside the, the fences, but we do have one, uh, you know, a bike rack. I'm going to say this is maybe 1% of, of all of our, the students uh, based on my experience, but we'll still have a more solidified plan um, as we get closer. Okay, but the, I, I guess my message is that we will plan to uh, temperature check students uh, prior to coming into any classroom, okay? All right, Rudy, if you wanna keep scrolling, that would be great. Uh, we talked about physical distancing. I don't know if I can, yeah, there's, like I said, some redundancy here. So uh, you can keep scrolling. We talked a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, there's pictures again. Um, 
health and hygiene. This is a little more specific. It talks about a certain uh, temperature, you know, degrees. Um, I'll let you guys, when I share this, you can read, read the fine print, um, but nothing, uh, you know, if the temperature is below that, um, you're fine. This is just a picture of the front office. If you haven't been here in a while, um, you know, we're, we're an op like I said, we're very open and we have a lot of uh, parent and visitor traffic and that's gonna be different now. Um, so when you do come to campus, we're going to uh, ask primarily that you don't, um, but if you need to, uh, what you'll have to go through the same protocols. We've got a little station set up uh, outside uh, for temperature checks. I've just transitioned. Um, I think those of you who have visited us before know we have a, the little lock blocks, the little door block. You can kind of see that in the picture, which allows you just to come on into the office, um, which is very convenient and nice. Um, I've just closed the door this last week just to get staff used to it. And they're um, coming to the door and being locked out and then having to go around. Um, but it is a control method. Um, sometimes parents come uh, now, you know, over the last uh, seven or eight months, and it's easy for us to help them without them coming in. Uh, you know, if it's to exchange a Chromebook, maybe to drop off student work or to pick it up. So there's not a huge need to come into the office. Um, but some people just kind of forget, I think, and just walk in and uh, I want to keep us all safe, right? Um, so that's the, the rationale there. It's not to um, make Fox an unwelcoming place. Um, and this, this COVID uh, protocols goes, goes against pretty much, um, well, everything I kind of believe in as a principal with the community. So it's, it's tough to do that, but I think uh, it's necessary. So keep that in mind. Um, hand washing, right? We talked a lot about that. We're planning to really work hard uh, to teach our students, um, make sure they do it before and after they leave and come to class. Uh, so we'll, we'll have those protocols in place. Um, Rui's worked uh, hard to have all the materials we need to do that. Um, so I feel confident when it comes to that. Uh, one right. thing that's I could actually chime in for a second because sure. there's a number of questions um, around cleaning between cohorts and ventilation. So I wanted to address that. Um, every HVAC system has been uh, upgraded to have MERV 13 filters. Um, those are actually the highest rated filters approved for use of HVAC systems. So I know that there's a lot of talk about HEPA filters. Um, HEPA filters cannot support um, high airflow. Um, they're meant for at-home use, but uh, they would actually restrict airflow in our HVAC systems, um, which is not what we want. Um, so they have been replaced with Verve 13, which actually fil filter out the same micron size as HEPA filters, but are designed for HVAC systems. And those are already in place. Um, we will be keeping the air on. Um, our energy efficiency efforts are going out the window um, to ensure circulation. And we'll also encourage doors and windows opening as weather um, allows. Um, and in terms of cleaning, um, I want to talk about a difference between uh, cleaning and sanitization. So, you know, something less scattered, that's cleaning. Sanitization or removing grime is cleaning. Sanitization um, is using a chemical. Um, and so specifically, uh, the EPA has a list, list N of chemicals that are approved to treat COVID effectively. Um, we're using... Uh, cleaning solutions from that list, uh, along with an electric fogger. Um, so that's going to be how the spaces are sanitized between cohorts. Okay, great. Sorry to interrupt, it was just a good timing between the cleaning and the questions. No, no, uh, no, no problem. Um, let's see, uh, water fountain. So uh, if you slide up a little bit higher there, Rui, so uh, I guess the other way towards the, towards the fountain, yeah. So as part of the uh, facility upgrade um, over the summer, we had these, um, we, they call them hydration stations. So we've got uh, those installed. One, the, that picture is um, near the, the main uh, blacktop area um, that you know third, fourth, and fifth grade would be playing on. And uh, there's one on each fountain. So there's two uh, there near the restrooms. And then there's a new one uh, on the kindergarten, what I call the kindergarten area. Uh, back where our first and kinders play primarily by the library. Our water fountains will be, you know, unusable, meaning they'll be covered. Um, so students will need to bring a, a reusable water, uh, water bottle uh, so they can refill that. 
Um, students won't be getting drinks out of the drinking fountain in the classroom. They'll be able to refill uh, their bottle, but we won't be able to, you know, put our mouths down on, on that. So uh, again, a little odd. Um, so we will ha have an ask of, of all of you to, to provide a reusable bottle. And we'll plan to have, um, you know, bottled water here for students that forget or lose it, things like that. Um, and again, these, these hydration stations are fine as long as we're not putting our, uh, our mouths uh, down on it, uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and use those. Um, so that's something uh, uh, different as well, um, but hopefully that'll help keep us safe too. Okay, thanks Ruby. Um, so personal protective equipment, um, you know, everyone, when I say everyone is expected to wear a face covering, that, that includes the students. Um, even all the way down to our littlest students. Um, there are some exceptions that are possible, but the large, 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 large majority we're going to require masks. Um, you know, everything that the science is telling us is saying that they're helpful. And um, even here on campus, there's a very a few, a few adults here, uh, but we're wearing masks and social distancing and we'll expect that of our, of our kids too. Um, so just have that in mind. We'll, we'll be asking uh, that you send, um, you know, in their backpack an extra mask. We will have uh, those two, but um, if, if a student loses one or it gets soiled or something, uh, but the expectation is that they wear them. And at first I thought this was gonna be very difficult, but what I've noticed just being here on campus, you know, students are here playing, um, I see students biking and running around, um, uh, you know, scootering, and everyone's wearing a mask, which is fantastic. So I know that it can be done, um, and I think our kids, as long as we guide them that way, uh, will be able to handle that. Um, so just keep that in mind, that that would be an expectation. Um, and as a principal, I'll, I'll uh, be enforcing that um, with reminders, and if it becomes too challenging, I, I would reach out to you parents to see um, what, what could be done. But, but it's uh, not an option uh, if we're on campus. We need to do that, okay? So just want to make you aware of that. Um, let's talk a little about the isolation room. So if somebody becomes ill and we think that there may be a COVID-related challenge, which of course, you know, we're at a school, we have sick kids, you know, it's, it's, it happens. Um, we are going to not use our office like we normally do. We have our, our nurse's station in a bathroom and um, in a bed where our kids you know, sometimes lay down and wait for mom or dad to pick them up. Uh, we can't do that because that may um, go ahead and um, contaminate the office. So, so we will come up with a designated isolation room. I think in this plan, I was talking about room 22, which is um, our teacher's lower lounge. I may be changing my mind on that, but um, we will have a, uh, a location to keep them uh, as separated as possible. But of course, they will be supervised. Um, and that, you know, maybe me, it may be Nurse Luna. Uh, we don't know yet. We'll have to see. And of course, we hope we don't run into that. But if we do, that's our plan to um, uh, limit exposure to anybody else. So we do have that. Uh, let's see. Cleaning, disinfecting, I, I mean, let's talk a little bit about that. I think Rui was kind of talking about that. We've been, uh, I don't think three or four meetings um, in the last month with Rui and our custodians um, collaborating on how to do it uh, efficiently, but effectively, and how we're gonna get those uh, high touch surfaces, door handles, things like that. We're building those into our schedules like we have not in the past, um, as opposed to, you know, hey, clean these rooms at this time, it, it, yes, but make sure, you know, we walk through uh, high use areas like restrooms. And um, uh, again, you know, the door handles, those type of things will be getting cleaned more often, or I should say maybe cleaned isn't the right word, really. It's uh, disinfected, is that the, yes. disinfected. I've got to learn the right terminology too. So we'll be working hard on that, but that in combination with keeping our hands clean and then keeping those surfaces clean, uh, I think will help mitigate our challenges. Not to say it's not going to be challenging, but I think we can do that. Um, let's see, uh, if you can scroll it a little further, students. 
Yeah, so students will not, I've got that in bold, expected to um, disinfect it. You know, we're not gonna say, okay, kids, here's your wipes and you're wiping down your desk. No, that we're not, no, they're not responsible for that. But yeah, we want them to pick up their materials like they normally would. Whether we keep their materials there at school overnight or whether we bring them back and forth, we're still deciding on what makes the most sense and what's the safest depending on, um, you know, the layout of the classroom and the space. But um, we want them to keep their themselves clean. That's the focus. If they do that, uh, that'll really translate to keeping, keeping the rest. Uh, ventilation, Rui talked about that. Um, communication. You know, I'm, you know, the principal in an elementary school, when, when they always say a point of contact, they're pretty much saying the principal, right? Um, that's sort of how our elementary schools work. So yes, I would be the point of contact, but I've got a lot of support that I'm going to be getting from, from the district as well. So, um, but there's things that are uh, different trainings that we'll work with, with our staff. And if you want to scroll through those, Rui, um, they're not super exciting to look at, but uh, different things that we'll be uh, training the staff. And then, you know, more appropriately for me is really the kids, you know, the roots going in and out. Um, if we're able to, uh, you know, depending on the model, if we're having recess, you know, where we play, how we play, um, you know, our bathrooms, which ones they go to, our hand washing, our distancing, it's going to take a, a, you know, a big effort from all of us adults to, to really teach the kids that. And uh, in partnership with you guys at home, um, I feel confident you know, this school has been great about anytime we need to do something collaboratively. So with all of us giving the same message and the importance of it, um, I think it will be a relatively smooth, smooth transition. So those are kind of the, the, the uh, student training topics. Scroll up. Well, let's see. Let me look what I put for parents. Sorry. I say up, but I mean down, I guess. Sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah. So parent topics, again, um, kind of the same, just to make sure we're talking to our kids about these things and kind of helping to prepare them um, when they get back. And then our, you know, our hand washing um, techniques, you know, the, I, I'm picturing now the, the, the hand washing that I see when I'm watching uh, Dr. Scrub Up, right, on some of my favorite shows and they're getting all in and all that. We really, really work that. And I've had to change my habits because um, I certainly didn't wash my hands like that. Uh, prior to all this happening. Um, so we'll work really hard on, uh, you know, teaching the kids the importance of that, because I really do think if we keep those hands clean, um, you know, our kids are less apt to put something in their mouth, their nose, their eye, their ear, uh, and, um, you know, when they're dirty, <laughs> dirty hands instead of the clean ones. So, um, okay, keep scrolling. I think we're almost at the end of this, uh, Rui, and then we can jump back. Again, here's just a, uh, uh, a schedule that I put together. Um, it, it matches uh, what was earlier in the uh, presentation. So like I said, it is um, a draft. So don't look at this and go, okay, my daughter's in first grade. We're going to start at 835 or we're going to start at 1235. I don't know that you will. Um, but it, I think it gives you an idea of what it may look like. That's more what I'm trying to accomplish tonight. Um, so as we get further along, you know, I need to talk to my staff about a lot of this um, and get their input. It's, it's um, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a fluid system, right? And um, so again, some of this is my ideas without full collaboration. Um, staff knows I'm working on it, but we haven't been able to collaborate quite as much as we um, would like. So there'll be more of that in the near future. But again, this hopefully gives you an idea of what an AMPM model might look like. Uh, Class time, let's see. I think we talked about that already. Um, recess play time. We haven't got this far, but you know we have to keep the kids separate even at recess. So that means we have to have separate areas that they play in. Um, so we'd have to determine, we're lucky at Fox with a big, you know, big yard. Um, so there's plenty of room to get uh, several groups out safely, uh, but, but I do not have that detailed out yet. I have some things in my mind, but uh, I also want to make sure students get a chance to access uh, the different structures when we're able to open those up and the different basketball courts and, and things like that. So there's some strategizing that I need to do there, uh, but, but rest assured I'm thinking about it and uh, 
to make sure we're safe. And then I think finally it says something about lunch, I think at the end, Rui. Um, I put NA there only because under this model, there wouldn't be lunch. Um, but we would be able to accommodate, again, up to 48 students on the red benches all at one time. So possibly some outdoor instruction too, um, as, as a use. So I've seen that at some of the other schools. Um, so that's a possibility for our benches too, um, or snacks, depending on what, what we decide. So that's, uh, that's, that's my draft plan. And I hate to say my, but primarily I did that. Um, Rue, if you want go, want to go back to the, the main slide deck and see what's on there. I know I'm really chatting away. Is there questions? Let's, this yeah. might be a good, um, let's Could let's you talk a little here. bit about next steps? There's a few questions. I think there's actually maybe a, important dates. Here we go. Um, can you review sort of the uh, dates and next steps there? Sure, sure. OK. Um, all right, family preference window. Okay, so that was um, what Rui was talking about earlier. Um, so you as parents are going to get, it, we're calling it a survey, but it's not really a survey. It's really you committing from my understanding to, to one of those three options um, saying, you know, uh, yes, I wanna come back hybrid. I wanna stay full distance learning, or, you know, I, I wanna stick with my teacher regardless of what they do. Is that an accurate way to, to describe it, Rui? Yeah, so your three options will be, I want hybrid learning, um, understanding this may mean uh, being assigned a different teacher. Um, I would like to prioritize distance learning, understanding this may involve switching to a new teacher, or I would like to keep my teacher regardless of which model. Um, okay. And I just wanna say that every effort will be made to uh, keep teachers, but the question is, um, you know, if, what is the one thing to prioritize around? So if a family wants hybrid and their teacher wants hybrid, we won't switch classes just for the sake of it. But if that teacher chooses distance, we need to know if that family would prefer to be in distance with the teacher or be in hybrid, even if it means a new teacher. Okay. Um, we are sending out the same survey to staff uh, and uh, because of timing, you will not know what your teacher's preference is prior to filling out your own survey. Um, but again, this is where, what is the one thing you want to optimize around comes into play. Okay. Um, sorry, one more thing, just because these uh, student, these questions are coming in. Um, students in the same family will be assigned the same tier. Okay, good. Um, one of the ways, uh, one of the principles that um, is already running a school that's um, in a hybrid model, I, I'm, I may not describe this exactly, but she, she made a good analogy saying that, you know, there's kind of the, the, the train tracks or the very smooth um, uh, option would be your distance learning, right? We're all pretty used to it now, whether we like it or not, we know what to expect. Um, you know, you might be in a groove, and then the hybrid she described as a roller coaster. Um, you know, if you if you go with a hybrid, there's a chance that you may go back to distance learning, right? It, you you may it, we don't know because we have these challenges with with the with the COVID out there. So, you know, distance again. If if you want a, a smooth, pretty consistent ride, that's probably your option. Um, if hybrid, we may have to, uh, you know, we may have to flex, um, you know, meaning your classroom, if there's a, if there's a, a case, um, things like that. So those are things I want you guys to think about, um, you know, as parents, I, those were kind of good words from her to say, you know, let, let your parents know that it could be kind of an up and down uh, um, experience, depending on what happens, right? The, the unknown. So Mike, can you talk a little bit about if there is a positive case, what will the notification process be and the, you know, shift to distance learning and all of that? Uh, um, well, I can do my best. Um, the, it, do we have a slide in there for that? I don't know if we have anything that specific. I, I know we have some what ifs. Yeah, but I don't know about the cases. I don't want yeah. to miss I, I can talk to the cases. Will you will you start with the um, the uh, notification and then I can chime in around um, the quarantining? Right. So our, if, if the question is, let's say a student has tested positive in, in class, is that I'm guessing that's what the question means. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we, we would notify the class. Right. Um, and everyone in now this starts at, you know, our um, 
at the district level too, right? Once we get that. But how far, Rui, do we go out? Um, let's, let's, I'm gonna create an example. I'm Mr. Pappas and I'm in you know, room one and one of the students has tested positive. Um, first step, yeah, first step. Now, all we know is that, co that cohort has stayed together, followed the protocols. Maybe they've been out on recess, but they haven't been with any other groups. Um, yeah, so um, essentially, so the important terminology to know here is close contact. And that means that you were within six feet for 15 minutes of a confirmed positive case. Um, so if we have a positive case in our community, we will notify everyone who is a close contact, which is the cohort. Um, and then there will be a blanket email sort of sent to protect privacy that says there was a case on this campus. Um, if you were not contacted, you were not a closed cohort. If an entire cohort goes on quarantine, then that cohort shifts to distance learning. Um, so you go from your AM, PM into what it looks like right now of just full distance learning. People are, are learning at home. Um, if somebody within the class outside of the class um, becomes an exposure. Uh, so they are exposed to someone outside of that class and that student needs to go on quarantine, but nobody else in the class was exposed. Um, then the class would continue and that student would receive essentially asynchronous and independent study work in order to do remote learning um, during that the two week time. Okay, so on that second example really means a student was exposed somewhere outside of school is what I'm hearing. And then that right. student would that student would be quarantined. Right. Okay. Correct. And then um, you know, if a school reaches five percent positive cases, then oh the sorry, the state guideline is that if a school reaches 5% positive cases, then the entire school needs to shift to distance learning. And if a district has 5% positive cases, the entire district shifts to, um, to distance learning. Um, that's the state guidelines. Uh, you know, We haven't set a specific policy, but in general, we have been more conservative than state guidelines. Um, as a few examples, state guidelines say to open schools in red, we are saying orange or yellow. Um, state guidelines saying that staff should be tested once a month, um, and we are offering on-site testing every two weeks. Um, so uh, just know that that is the state guideline, um, and we will also have our own guidelines um, for those that are concerned about changing conditions. Okay, thanks, Rui. That's a good explanation. Um, can you speak a little bit, Mike, to uh, what the distance learning experience will be um, when we shift to a hybrid learning model, since both will be going on concurrently? Um, well, yeah, I mean, the distance learning would look like it looks now. Um, you have your, again, I don't know if it would be the same teacher, um, but you would have, it, it, again, you're, you're kind of doing what we'd be doing now. Um, I think that answered the question. Yes? Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, are students allowed to walk and bike to school without a parent being present at drop off? Um, good question. I would say yes. Yes. Um, yeah, a parent doesn't have to be present. Um, we still have to screen the child either way, but, but yeah, I would say that that would be, would be fine. Um, will the distance, if uh, in a distance learning model, will the teacher be from our school? Uh, I don't know if that I can 100% guarantee that. I think, I think that's our goal. Um, but right now, for, I, I couldn't guarantee that. So the answer is, we hope so. But, but it depends on uh, the feedback we get from, from the staff at large and who may, um, may need to, to work uh, in a distance model. So I know that we'll have to build around the, that staffing challenge. So we're hopeful, but, but I can't guarantee that. Uh, there was also a question that asked um, if it's the teacher, does it become both the AM and PM pods that goes to distance learning? And the answer there is yes. Yeah. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, there's some questions about um, whether the selection this year uh, will impact their school placement next year. Um, and no, it will not. As in, if they're in a distance learning um, with a teacher from a different school, does that, do they then shift to that school and it doesn't impact next year? Okay. Let's see. Uh, can you comment on the student teacher interaction during hybrid instruction? Uh, well, um, if, if you mean like, what's it going to look like or it, what I'm envisioning, I haven't seen it in action. Um, again, where the goal is to stay, uh, distance, which in a classroom, uh, we need to be realistic, right? If, even if the students are, uh, in their desks, you know, they do need to get up from time to time to do different things. Um, and teachers, you know, they need to help their students. And that may mean that they uh, have to come closer than six feet from time to time to help them. Um, so uh, I'm not sure exactly if that's what the question is asking when this, you know, what that interaction will look like. Um, teachers will be uh, in masks. Um, we do have... Um, sound systems, the red cat systems that will be in every classroom uh, prior to January 19th, which should help with uh, some of the audio, meaning, you know, with masks and those different things, it, it can be challenging um, to hear sometimes. So, so we have that in, um, we will have that in all the classrooms too. So we hope that that will be a good tool um, for our teachers. And then our students were able to, to hear them more clearly. Um, I'm seeing a couple of questions about whether families will choose between AM or PM slots. Um, at this time, we are not collecting that preference. Um, and then uh, Mike, can you reiterate, I think maybe some folks are joining late about the impact of uh, shifting tiers on our plan to reopen? Uh, sure, yeah. So since we are now in the red, um, the short answer is if we are in the red, we won't reopen. Um, will only reopen under the orange or yellow tiers. So I was saying earlier that if, if it was January 19th right now, we wouldn't be reopening, um, but we are planning uh, to reopen. So if we stay in the red, um, we wouldn't be reopening on the 19th. Is that, does that cover the question, Rui? Yeah. Yeah, that essentially our guidance is to open in uh, orange or yellow from our board. Um, and, uh, you know, currently we are planning for that for January 19th and we'll continue to monitor, um, we'll continue to monitor kind of community rates. Um, I'm seeing a few more questions around siblings and yes, siblings will be kept in the same AM or PM group. Uh, and um, at the end of this week, after all of our town halls, we will also be posting um, a uh, FAQ site. Um, so for those of you who haven't seen, if you go to our district's website, there's a school reopening banner on top that leads you to our school reopening website with a lot of this information as well as the site specific ones. I think we're uh, just over our hour with that. Are we? Okay. Um any, let's see if there's anything uh, really like quick questions I can answer. Otherwise, uh, you know, folks, like I said earlier, you know, reach out to me. I may not have the answer, but I certainly can um, get back to you and, you know, see what I can find out. Um, anything, you know, last minute that, that I can answer. Um, a couple questions around, uh, so siblings at the same site um, having staggered drop-off times and what the expectation will be there. <sighs> Well, yeah, good question. Um, I'm envisioning that you have to come back and drop them off. If it's a kindergartner and a fifth grader, um, at this point, I, I, I don't know where the, those students could hang out for 20 or 25 minutes right now. Um, it's not like a rainy day where I could bring everybody in the middle room and mix that. So if we can, uh, you know, come up with a good, good solution to that. I'm, I'm, why I'm open, but as of right now, I, I haven't come up with that solution. So I would say, yeah, you know, you'd have to drive through again 
15 or 20 minutes later, if, if you're driving, like I'm, I'm making an assumption, but um, yeah, sorry. I know that's very inconvenient for, for some of the, for some of you out there. Uh, and then uh, final question is um, a couple questions around childcare. So we have met with all our childcare partners um, to let them know about our model and talk through that um, and are working with them around space constraints and whatnot. Um, but in terms of the specific childcare offerings, um, I would reach out to, uh, to Curiosity Corner around their plans. Um, we're really leaving that to each of our partners to decide. Okay, thanks Rui. Okay, um, Fox community, uh, thank you guys for, for hanging in there during all this. Um, I will continue to uh, try to support everybody and do, do the best I can under the circumstances. And like I said, tonight uh, is, a, is a plan, it's a draft plan and, and it'll probably change uh, quite a bit, but I just was hoping to give you some confidence uh, that you know, we we won't do this unless we're going to be able to keep our kids safe, um, and in our you know, in in myself and the staff, right? Um, you know, I certainly don't want to get get ill either. And um, overall, we've we've been lucky in this community as far as I know. So I'd like to keep it that way. Um, but if you have other questions, uh, again, just reach out to me. I'm here, you know, eight to four, and um, I can get right back to you and, and try to try to get them answered. Okay. Or, or for that matter, any great ideas that um, when you've heard these challenges that we're, we're coming up with, please share. It's, uh, I don't wanna work in isolation here. So, you know, share, share what you see. You know, if you've got uh, knowledge from other schools or uh, things going on in other countries for that matter that may work or be appropriate here, share them. And, uh, uh, you know, I'd love to, to get us, you know, back, back together. I guess that's it, Rui. Jerome, I guess that's it. All right. Okay, thank you guys. Um, and then this will be posted shortly for those of you that wanna listen to me more, I guess you could watch it later, but, um, and then we'll get up some of the, uh, the slide decks for you to take a look at too, okay? But I appreciate you uh, spending your evening with us. Thank you. Okay, bye everybody, thanks. <laughs>